in every way. I am getting better and better. Every day. God said, no, we, we. Mm -hmm. I'm 
waiting for you. You waited for God, God's waiting for you, so there's a standoff. And in that standoff, we define that period as spiritual indigestion. Indigestion is something that you experience, and if I went to the audience and passed the mic and say, describe indigestion, everybody might describe it differently. But bottom line is that you know how it feels. <laughs> you know when you got it. You might call it different things, but you might go to the doctor and you don't even know that it was indigestion until he, he tells you that it's indigestion. Simply because the symptoms appear as this, but underlying it, different things will cause it. Different, there are different things that will cause indigestion, and so too it is with spiritual indigestion. Spiritual indigestion manifests as sickness in life, problems in life, frustration, worry, fear, uh, uh, and you can make a whole list of illnesses and sickness. It's a whole list of financial problems and so forth. So all of that is caused by spiritual indigestion, but those are symptoms caused by different things. In the world of natural indigestion, do you know what is used more than anything else for that kind of indigestion? Tell me what it is. Tons. <laughs> Tongues. Tongues. The invention were created in 1900, around 1936 by this pharmacist whose wife had indigestion and tongues. There was no tongues before he created it for his wife. And since then, we've been using tongues for antacid more than any other uh, prescription. Likewise, since Emil's creation or giving to us of the affirmation every day in every way. I am getting better and better. That one has been used more than any other affirmation that we know about. So it's your spiritual tongue. So what I'm giving you today is like the old pharmacist did. I'm giving you a prescription and you leave here today with your spiritual tongue. And when things start bothering you and pressing you and you're really concerned about this unanswered prayer, take your tongue. What is your tongue? First Corinthians 15 says, There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a what? Spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. It is the spiritual body that we're talking about today. Matthew, uh, Matthew 15, let's take, take how Jesus was dealing with it. The Pharisees were talking to him, interviewing him, and I'm going all the way down to verse 7, where they started with verse 1, where he said this to them, you are made unholy by eating non kosher food. It is what you say and think that makes you unclean. See, they were asking him uh, about, uh, they were talking about the washing of hands before they eat, and they were talking about eating non kosher non country non kosher food, and Jesus was listening to them, he got fed up with it, so he started passing them out, he said, then Peter asked Jesus to explain what he meant when he said that people are not defiled by non kosher food. Don't you understand? She didn't mm. <laughs> yes. Don't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see that anything you eat passes through the digestive tract and out again? Did you hear him say digestive tract? Mm -hmm. Indigestion and spiritual indigestion. He said, but evil words come from your, an evil heart. And this is what defiles a man. From the heart are thoughts about murder, adultery, fornication, death, lying, and slander comes. These are what defile. But there is no spiritual defilement from eating without first going through the ritual of ceremonial or hand washing. The point is, is that he was telling them what we teach here today, what we have uh, distilled out of the New Testament teachings, our Ernest Holmes did, was a teaching system called the Science of Mind. Right here. Because we can see in this that he's talking about the operations of the conscious and the unconscious mind. He is saying, it is not what goes in to you that causes problems. It is what? It's what comes out of you, out of your unconscious mind that defiles. So every day, every day, in every way, 
know he don't know you send it. He just bring it in. He was in, was out. Am I right? Yes. Not only does the unconscious self reside over the functions of our organism, but also over all actions, whatever they are. It is this that we call imagination. Now, let's hold on to that word. Here we go. We're going to take off the ground from this place of imagination. All of this is talking about your imagination. Your imagination is creative. Those words going into that imagination, which is res which resides in that subconscious mind, that imagination goes forth and creates whatever it is that you're sending out. John 14 says, in my father's house are many mentions. I go before you, what? To prepare a way, to prepare a place. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. So that, it, that, that whatever you're putting into that subconscious mind, those words creating images, those images take flight and goes to that place in the finishing room, finishes and come back and receives you into it. If it's cancer, if it's AIDS, if it's muscle promotion, the high blood pressure, if it's arthritis, is it blood robust and discuss it? I want to see it. Whatever it is, it goes before you and comes back and makes you the thing that you're sending out. It doesn't matter, good or bad, it does not know any difference between good or bad. All right, so then what we're doing here, reading on, it says, it is necessary to define carefully two words, suggestion and auto-suggestion. Suggestion does not, suggestion, let's hang on a minute, go back to the scriptures. It says, whatever you shall ask, that's suggestion. That suggestion is your prayer request. That suggestion of whatever you're naming that you want in your life. To get rid of or to attract, that's a suggestion. Okay, suggestion does not exist by itself. It does not and cannot exist except by two words. And science. Except by. Except by transforming itself into what? Auto suggestion. And between those two points, and that transition is spiritual indigestion. If things are not manifested into your life. But there is something that you can use for relief and to straighten things out so that it can transform from suggestion into auto-suggestion, and that is this affirmation. Come on, let's say it. Every day and every way, I am better and And there's never a time when I teach this or speak on this when at the end someone will stop and say, well, I don't understand. And people say it five times and they'll keep coming back the same way. How do you say everything is, I am getting better and better? Instead of saying, I am right now. My first response in my mind is not the answer that I get. <laughs> the answer that I give is this, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Okay, so like Jesus. <laughs> but let me tell you what I said. Just this, is that God's word is finished. It's already done. That's the principle that we teach. Right. Now go on about your business and live it out. But John 10 and 10 says, but the thief, which is the ego. Wow. See, the old church would say that that one is a lie. Yeah. They all have to be able to come right in the they <laughs> 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 uh, from something that's uh, The devil is a liar. <laughs> and it works for them. We say the same thing, but we call it the ego. The ego is a liar. Yes. So as soon as you send that prayer off, here comes the ego. Uh -huh. Answering, uh, of course, the river says the ego will have you answering questions to, to which there are no answers. Uh -huh. yes. Creating doubt and fear and worry and all that kind of stuff. So what I say to them is that's why we use the affirmation. It's for the human mind. It's for their ego to get it out of the way of that which is already done. Yes. Now that's my answer, but what's in my mind is this. <laughs> I won't be answering all them dumb questions. <laughs> I never do that in my training. Because I... If Ernest Holmes said it, I believe it. If Jesus said it, I believe it. If any of Quimber has, Cooey has said it and all these thousands of people be here, I don't have no question. I'm just going to put it into practice yeah. and let the answer be the question. <laughs> Stop the silly question. <laughs> the question that you're asking don't make even sense to you. 
You're <laughs> trying to impress the ego. Wasting time. Stop asking the questions and put the stuff in the practice. Suggestion does not indeed exist by self. It does not, it cannot exist except by transforming itself into auto suggestion. This may be defined as the imprinting of an idea in oneself by oneself. You may make a suggestion to someone. Now here's where you can get kind of Watch what he says. He says, you may make a suggestion to someone, and you can place that someone to yourself in prayer. You may make a suggestion to the subconscious mind. But if this unconscious does not accept the suggestion, if it has not, as it were, digested it, spiritual indigestion, in order to transform it into auto-suggestion, it produces no result. Mm -hmm. Hypnosis is when a suggester is suggesting to the subject. And it will never become hypnosis because nobody can get the facts. Anybody without their cooperation and acceptance. Yes. Yes. But it does not become hypnosis by that suggestion until the other person receives it and accepts it. Yes. Got that? Yes. Okay. Same with the prayer life. When you're suggesting in prayer that something is part of you has to receive it, accept it, and it transforms itself. Into auto suggestion. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have myself, he says, occasionally made a commonplace suggestion to order to, to ordinarily very obedient people, quite unsuccessful. See, he wasn't successful all the time. Mm -hmm. The reason is that the unconscious of that person refused to accept it. You understand what we're saying? Yes. So that's why Jesus said it is done unto you as you go either way. He gets this on you. Listen, listen to this. It is done unto you as you believe. So they come buddy back to Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord, Jesus. You got so much power. Jesus said, Your faith has made you well. Don't look at me. I have no power of my own. I'm a motivator. I'm a coach. <laughs> I'm a coach. I'm a motivator. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what we do. We can't heal you. But if you do what this says, we just come here with the same old message over and over and over and just change the story. Hmm. But there's only one message. Yeah. This understood, auto suggestion is nothing but hypnotism as I see it. And I would define it in these simple words. The influence of the imagination upon the moral and physical being of mankind. If you persuade yourself, pause, <laughs> persuade. That's what that affirmation is for. That's what your spiritual tongue is for, is to continue to persuade. Persuade in that female aspect of consciousness. Persuade in that female. Persuade in that fertile soul. Persuade in that subconscious mind. Persuade that. You do believe. And how do you persuade? Oh, you might have to change your colors. <laughs> you might have to start looking like what you want to be. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might have to change your attitude. Mm -hmm. You might have to change your belief. You might have to change your smell. You might have to change your talk or change your walk. Mm -hmm. You might have to start acting like you are that like what you want to be. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might start acting like it's already here. Yeah. You might, you might, you might, you got you might start you might start being nice. <laughs> <laughs> you might start acting like you may be looking at you be. <laughs> you might start acting like you may accept good stuff. Uh -huh. If you may accept kind of things. Yeah. Yes. You, what you become, you become. But you become it first. That's right. You might have to act like the pain is gone. Right. Do the things that you would do if the pain wasn't there. Uh huh. Reverend Knight used to teach you this. Go into that store. 
fire on the floor. <laughs> Go into that combat, smear the new the 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 You know, then, then all of a sudden people just say, Hallelujah. And they send in the checks, you know, whatever. They send in the checks for what they need. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, if on the contrary, wait a minute. Uh, and start from the top. This understood all the suggestion is nothing but hypnotism as I see it, and I would define you to be several words. The influence of the imagination of a moral and physical being of mankind. If you persuade yourself that you can do a certain thing, prescribe that thing is possible, you will do it however difficult it may be. If on the contrary, you imagine that you cannot do the simplest thing in the world, it is impossible for you to do it. And mobile hills become for you, unstable. Yes, I can. If you have really made the oral suggestion and what this spiritual calm helps you to do, you say it many times, you say it ten times, you say it as many times as you and you can, you fall asleep at night on it. You, you, you go to W, you go to ReverendAman.com <laughs> or ReverendAman.org. My, my website pops up, and all of the lessons from Tuesdays are there, talking about what we're talking about. If you find reason that you can't come on Tuesdays, it's not going to work, and you've got problems. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and listen to it, because what we do on Tuesday, we post. But this series here, we have got about eight or nine lessons on this approaching, but we've been reserving and posting these until we can post them at the same time so they can fall in order and fall in sequence. So take a look. Um, if you have really made the auto suggestion, that is to say, if your unconscious has assimilated the idea, that's me too, that you have presented to it, you are astonished to see the thing you have thought come to pass. <laughs> Y'all feel better? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I can do it. I feel like that whatever it is that I thought I couldn't do, I feel that all things are possible yeah. with God yeah. in my life. Yeah. Let's close this. Let's go for the finishing line with James chapter right. one. In James chapter one, it says this. Now, what I'm about to read several verses here is going to explain to you how. The antacid works. The antacid. What is the antacid? That you talked. And what it's going to do here is break up its impacts. It's going to accelerate this manifestation of demonstration. If you understand what I'm saying. But you have to start off with this one basic principle, this one basic thought. That whatever it is that you brought up, when I said, what do you need to pray about? One, two, three, whatever. It didn't come from out of nowhere. It came through your own life experience somehow. You don't look at the, 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 the positive aspect of this is that if your mind created, then you got the power to change it. But if it came from somewhere else and you don't, then you can't change it. You don't you have the power to change it. So the first thing you learn to do with whatever it is, is E-M-B-R-A-C-E. -E. That's seven letter signs. Embrace. Everybody say embrace. 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 One time. Embrace. And that's time. Embrace. And that's what kills people. Mm -hmm. When you embrace it, you defame it. You take the power from it. You take the power from it. Yes. The old fear leaves. Oh, the bigger they come, the harder. Oh. That's what this says, man. Right? It came to pass. It didn't come to stay in your life. It came as a blessing, and don't change your blessing into a curse. It came to pass. It came from your own consciousness. Now here comes the questions. Why don't you just accept it and be quiet? Just accept it and embrace it. What you say doesn't matter what it is. Where did it come from? I am 72 years old. And I'm not going to be sitting around here asking them silly questions. <laughs> <laughs> if I got something bothering me, I'm going to put it right in the back. Where did it come from? Who did it? Where did it come from? Forget that. 
<laughs> James chapter 1, verse 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy. Did I just say that? Yeah. Embrace it. Count it all joy. Take it as a joy to you when you enter into many and many trials and temptations. When you enter into many problems and situations. <laughs> count it all joy. For you know that the trial of your faith will increase your patience. The problem comes to increase your patience and your tolerance and your endurance. You're stronger on the other hand yes. after you come You're different. You have risen in consciousness by, by leaps and bounds. We're not for that problem. Yes. Count it all joy. It has come to stretch you, to grow spiritually. And let patience be a perfect work that you may perfect and, in, and endure like nothing. Mm -hmm. A double minded man is unstable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you read the back of the you can jump it up and stop. <laughs> <laughs> Is the oil produced? Pretty, pretty. <laughs> 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 